Good morning, everybody. This is um, webinar four of Quantum PM's Art of the Possible webinar series. Um, these webinars have really focused on, you know, how do we use best practices and some of the possible capabilities around the Microsoft um, PPM toolset and opportunities with integration, and you know how companies and organizations can take best advantage of their investment in, in Microsoft and Microsoft technology. Um, today, we're going to focus on is understanding Microsoft licensing for project and project online. Um, a lot of times, one of the key challenges we see with companies is that you know they invest in these licenses and they don't really understand you know what they've paid for in effect. Um, so there's a lot of capabilities that are necessary that are sometimes left on the table. So we're going to talk about what a premium license is like, what a professional license is, and what an essentials license is, and what those capabilities are. Um, the other thing we're going to talk about today is the whole new project um, in September. Uh, I guess last month, Microsoft announced at Ignite that they are releasing a new version, or as they call it, project, new project, uh, which is going to be rolled out starting in December um, into next year. Uh, we'll talk about what we what we know about the new project, what the capabilities are, how do we migrate to new project, what the architecture will look like. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in Redmond today, actually, doing this webinar, and we're meeting with Microsoft tomorrow. So I'll share everything I know at this point. Um, and, they're, and to be candid with you, there's a lot of information that, you know, that they you know, have been not been, there's a lot of information they're preparing right now that hasn't actually been shared even with, with Microsoft partners. So we'll, we could talk about all of that. Um, in terms of our Art of the Possible series, I mean, the, the, this today's session is focusing on licenses, um, project online licenses. We've got two, additional session next Tuesday, focusing on trend analysis and snapshots. Um, one of the capabilities around um, the Quantum PM brings to the table is this, the BI Advantage Azure based integration hub. One of the key capabilities of that solution is the ability to do snapshots for trend analysis. So things like continuous improvement, um, understanding you know what's going on from a data perspective, and opportunities to integrate data and, and take snapshots and do analytics against against it. You know we'll be talking about those types of things. Um, we'll talk about automation um, in November, and then there's actually one beyond this on reporting. So um, these have been some pretty good sessions. Uh, they're all available for replay on the quantumpm.com/webinars um, website. Uh, other on-demand webinars that we have, we we did a whole healthcare series focusing on challenges in the healthcare industry. Um, we did a, a webinar series focused on financial services and some of the um, challenges fa focused on in that industry and, and how do we adopt and, and address them. And then on the bottom, we had a series of just pure PPM best practice um, webinars. So again, if you go to this quantumpm.com slash webinars website, you'll, you'll see a lot of information on it. Um, who are we? We are a gold Microsoft partner. Um, we, we've we been in business since 2000. Um, we work very closely with Microsoft. And like I was saying, I'm in, I'm in Redmond today um, to really, you know, in terms of implementation, I mean, Microsoft basically develops the technology. You know, our job is to implement it and actually, you know, drive best practice solutions and, and prove the ability of organizations to solve um, key challenges. Um, so we're, the, we're we're an implementation partner with Microsoft. Um, the PPM area of expertise, I mean, in terms of, you know, things that we do, PPM, resource management, demand and life cycle, workflow for process automation, BI and, and business intelligence and dashboards, that's like the whole thing, again, for reporting and also for snapshots, um, integration of PPM technologies with other systems, um, our BI Advantage tool integrating with like ServiceNow and, SA, and ERP and um, Planner and um, Asana, I mean, all types of different applications. Desktop add-ons um, for um, additional additional process control, and then technical migrations and SharePoint and Exchange um, set up and, off, and also Office 365 strategies. Okay, let's talk about the capabilities. And one of the this is an interesting document that Microsoft put out for the PMI Institute put, published this. Um, in terms of you know the PPM opportunity, um, essentially what this shows on the right is that companies are not taking maximum advantage of the of what PPM can do for an organization in terms of achieving and optimizing ROI on um, on investments from a, both a dollar perspective and also from a resourcing perspective. So this PMI chart on the right, what this tells you is, you know, on, on the X axis here, which projects are we are we doing them properly? You know, 60 per, 62 percent of project meets the goals. So that means that there's about 38 percent of them, which of projects that aren't, in fact, uh, being executed properly, aren't being delivered on time, um, are not um, delivering the expectations against the business case. The other opportunity here is the whole do the right projects side of this, where are we actually is it from a portfolio management perspective, are we 
selecting to do projects that best drive strategy, best or, best are aligned with the goals and objectives of the organization. Um, so they're not about 43% here. So you can think about it from terms of, you know, the ability to select the correct pro projects and also manage them properly. There's tremendous opportunity out here for organizations to achieve um, additional success. And this is where this whole license discussion comes in because, you know, you, you're paying for the tool. If, if you've got a project, if you've got a project essentials, um, premium license, you're paying for portfolio management. Are you doing it or not? You know, there's just you paid for the licenses to do this, um, and and you choose, and you know there's an opportunity here to implement those types of solutions to um, drive success. Um, in terms of capabilities, you know, again for the best practice capabilities with all with the whole um, group of licenses, portfolio and demand management associated with a premium license, enterprise resource management, again a premium license, project management using waterfall and agile, um, those are all project professional, project sites. You can any any of the three licenses will work with provide project sites, ideation and intake processing, workflow integration with third party systems, um, integration with Power BI to provide dashboards and reports that can be aligned to specific stakeholders. You know that integration across the Office 365 suite. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and and again, one of the, one of the things I see a lot is the companies. You know they try to they can't do all this at once. So you need to think about it in terms of aligning adoption with pain points and the logical build 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 um, schema for these um, systems to go forward. Um, project online benefits. I mean, they, Microsoft this did a, a brand new Forrester report um, in terms of the ROI on this, and you know this, essentially what they're saying is about 387 percent return on a project online investment. Uh, reporting efficiencies resulted in 60 percent time savings. Uh, we see that all the time. I mean, a lot of times you've got project managers focused on creating PowerPoints, creating Excels, um, where if you use like a Power BI report, which is well designed, you have the opportunity there to, um, you know, to take away that manual process and manual steps. Uh, resource utilization, 83% reduction in overtime. This is a major pain point. I mean, one of the things we see all the time is companies say, well, I, you know, I don't know what my people basically are working on. You know, they've got about 30 or 40% of their time allocated to project or definable tasks. And then there's a this bucket of, quote, support time and other items. So the ability to better manage and understand what people are working on and, and, and align it with the strategies and objectives of the organization is a huge, or, a huge opportunity for companies. Integration to ERP. Um, I mean, that's a big opportunity using BI Advantage, um, not just for material savings, but also for cost management, um, understanding and tracking cost associated with projects. Um, Cloud-based solutions, Project Online, that's a big one right there because, you know, since it's on the cloud, all you need to do is add a, add a waffle to your Office 365 subscription, um, and you can start with Project Online and Power BI immediately. Uh, mature project management practices. That's an important one as well, because again, I was saying, you know, don't think you have to do all this the first day. Um, you know, you got to think about where are your pain points, uh, focus on those, and then adopt as your organization gains maturity, because it takes time to, you know, to develop the, the capability and the maturity within the organization. So don't try to rush it, because if, if people aren't using the process and it's not accepted by the group, it's not going to drive the success you're looking for. Uh, let's see, benefits of cloud, best practice reporting infrastructure, disaster recovery, um, scalable and mobile access, security through Azure, integration with O365, lower cost of ownership through cloud, through infrastructure, the opportunity for better governance and controls, reporting and dashboards. So there are some significant ones there. All right, let's talk about licenses here. Project online license comparison and, and project server licenses. The, when you're defining licenses, the, the thing you need to do really is understand what the roles, hold on, what the roles are of the individuals within an organization. Um, and the way to think about it, if we're going to look at Project Online here, is you know these are by subscription, by user, um, they're part of an enterprise agreement, um, and the way to think of it is if you're in Project Online, for example, if you're talking essentials, that's a team member. Okay, that would be somebody who's actually doing the work. So they would update their issues and risks, submit timesheets, share documents, and collaborate um, using share using SharePoint um, presence. Project Align Professional, think of that as your project manager. Um, this would be the person who actually sets up the projects, um, goes ahead and assigns the resources, does the um, scheduling, does the cost management, does the um, um, does all the work around you know pretty much all the all the um, 
publishing it in terms of publishing and, and managing the versioning of it, um, does the reporting as well. So this is, and the other thing that comes with a Project Online Professional subscription is what they call a click-to-run version of um, per Project Professional. So you can get it on your desktop rather than on just the PWA side of it. And then you get the Project Online Premium, which really does everything that a Project Professional does. Um, and plus it allows you to do enterprise resource management, enterprise portfolio management, demand management. This is all the portfolio management activities and then the enterprise resource management. Usually from a mixed perspective, you know, in most organizations, you, you might say, you know, I would say, you know, 5% of users or fewer or maybe here. Um, you might have 20% falling in this bucket and the rest of them are essentials users. Um, from a cost perspective, I mean, these are, you know, like six bucks a month and it depends on your enterprise agreement, but, you know, these are like 25 and then this is around 40. So it's a lot more expensive as you get to the higher capabilities. Um, but, you know, really understanding, um, you know, what licenses you have available is pretty important. Um, there's also opportunities like, for example, if you're a Dynamics 365 user and you're using, um, if you're using PSA, um, there's some premium licenses that come with that. So really, it's worth the time to go ahead and investigate um, what the capabilities are there. I got another spreadsheet here I want to show everybody. And, and um, it's really not a dot. Where's my power? Here it is. Yeah, here's I've got a um, we've got a license comparison tool here. And it really I think the way to, this really gives a good analysis of what it is from a you know core services functionality across the three license types. You know, Active Directory integration is, is uniform. Um, I mean, I, one of the things people don't understand when they implement Project Online or Power BI, you are you are integrate you are basically implementing Office 365 because it does go through AD. Um, so this is all important. So in terms of like administrative deployments, issue risk management, O365 trust, um, the partner ecosystems, services. You know, up terms of updates that are coming through, collaboration. I mean, these are all uniform across. This is not specific to a, to a license schema. It's more associated with, um, you know, the fact that this is an Office 365 component, and this is part of the Microsoft technology that's being released. Um, in terms of features, um, if you want to think about it this way, you've got time and task management. All three schemas could handle that one. Issues and risk management, um, Project Online Professional and Premium. Uh, resourcing, they're not doing resources, schedules. So this is really, you know, if, if, again, like if you're an essentials user, it's all focused on, you know, time management and task management. This can be more focused on schedule management, project management as it goes. Um, and then you've got, um, you know, the ability to edit projects, you know, financial management is, is a premium function here. But you can see here in terms of like, you know, in terms of the capabilities that go, in terms of the, when you get to the portfolio side of it and the program side of it, that's really the premium. This is the PM side of this. Um, the place where the other place where this gets interesting is um, some of the Power BI content packs. Those are associated with a premium license. Um, desktop reporting, you know, that can be project, um, that could be a professional or a premium license. Um, and then the whole resource management piece, which is the um, resource engagements and requests, and then the managed resource pool. That's all premium licenses that come along there. Um, and we can share, I mean, we, if you re, at the end of the session, if you reach out to myself or Lori Dawkins, uh, we can share this document with you because this does give a pretty good uh, view into this. The other thing that this spread, this other document has, which is kind of interesting, is one of the challenges the project managers have is what can I do with a project online PWA function versus Project Pro? Um, so, I mean, that's another thing. When you, when you purchase a professional license within Project Online, you have the option of getting Project Pro as a click-to-run version of it. So there are things you can do on the desktop Project Pro, which integrate with, with Project Web Access um, that um, are not supported by PWA. So in terms of like editing and graphing and network diagrams and calendar views, um, there's, there's things that come along with Project Pro on the desktop version um, that, would, that are not available in PWA. Um, don't want to go through, through some of these that are more interesting here, but here's some other ones. Resource leveling, task, in terms of like some of the custom fields that you want to define for resources, time phase editing, um, planner over allocations. Um, a lot of this is, again, done with the desktop version, which is integrated with PWA. Um, so there's a lot of stuff from a resource management perspective or having the project, um, having the desktop version through a professional license is pretty useful. And then for a lot of these other ones, it's pretty uniform. Uh, we could definitely share this with you if you reach out at the end of the session to with Lori Dawkins. Any questions on this at this point? Lori, does anybody have any questions? No questions at this point. Okay. So now we've got the, you know, we talked about the three license categories. And if anyone has any questions, you can just type in the dialog box on um, 
on Skype. So the question is, is you know, what's the best way to what to optimize these? Um, you know, because again, the, the the top on the left here it talks about some of the challenges. Many companies, you know, when they implement these solutions, you know, it's based on prior use cases, existing processes, legacy solutions. They kind of try to replicate what they have and don't try to take advantage of the full capability of the of the tool. Um, you know, they talk about the, what the three license types are on the right, but how do we go about doing this? And really, what it is is you know what I call an art of the possible type mechanism where we go through the tool and do a best practices demo of what can be what is delivered by each one of the license types and use that as a mechanism for developing a requirements document that can be used for um, customizations and um, project improve for customizations and um, improvements to the overall solution a lot of times you know when you roll this thing out you just gotta you know you're starting with a baseline focus on key pain points but also you want to make sure that your roadmap that comes out of this is is um, represents and prevent and provides the best practice capabilities of the overall tool. Um, and this is a big part is you know the, the challenge here is you want to try to align projects and resources to your strategy. I mean that's one of the goals of the objectives of of what what these types of exercises are. So you're trying to maximize the benefit of the licenses, but you want to make sure from a strategic perspective, you know, projects and resources are aligned. So the way to think about it is when you're when you're developing these roadmaps for art of the possible, it's, it's really, you know, understand what the corporate strategy is, understanding what the key programs and initiatives are, and then how that aligns to um, projects as they go. Um, and what that does from a from a governance perspective is, you know, you've got the whole, you know, collaboration and project management with enterprise resource enterprise resource management with an integrated delivery framework. Then you got portfolio management, which is aligned with business objectives. And the idea here basically is you again is you want to optimize the alignment between what the people are working on from a resourcing perspective, and also um, you make sure that is aligned with the strategy of the organization, and then also that you know the drivers from an investment perspective are also um, captured and um, reflected. Um, this is another one in terms of when you're considering project management um, governance. You know, don't try to think you need the most rigid. Um, governance as possible. Um, one of the things I've found in, in doing this for a long time is that, you know, depending upon the, the complexity of what you're, tr what you're trying to do, how risky the project is, whether it's something you've done many times, whether it's a, you know, high, high investment, you know, the, the risk profile of a project can determine, you know, how you should, what governance should be put around a particular project as well. So, I mean, it's really important when you're, when you're considering licenses that you're also build the processes and structures and governance around it to, um, to drive the, um, completion of the projects overall. Yeah, and in terms of, you know, how all this license stuff fits into a, into a PMO structure, you know, it's important to understand that, you know, any organization, what happens is you've got demand for a service or a capability or technology coming from the business, right? The business is saying, we want this, we want that, we want this, we want that. Um, and then you've got, you know, IT or, or whatever the provider is providing a supply of that um, of that demand or supply of that um, capability that's being de desired. And really the goal here from a, from a PMO perspective and what from a PPM perspective is to really make sure that there's alignment between, you know, what the demand is and what the supply is. Um, and, and this is pretty important because Project Online can really help you do this. I mean, what, the, what you're trying to do here is to, as they say, get the, get the handshake between supply and demand where, you know, they're, what they're asking for and what you're able to provide is pretty much equal and you're working on the right stuff. Um, this can get a little more interesting when you're doing like continuous delivery and agile based development, but all that, you know, it's still, it's about making sure the demand and the supplier are more or less aligned and you've got a delivery operation or a capability model that can provide um, what's needed to um, drive um, overall, pro overall um, um, objectives of the organization. So from a capability perspective, you know, you got the lines of business making, demanding different things. Um, input into the project function, you know, again, the licensing thing, uh, you know, this would come in, you could have ideation on the front end, which can be through SharePoint. Um, then you can have candidate projects, which can be looked, that can be looked at through demand and portfolio management, which is a Microsoft project premium license. Um, if a project is chosen for selection into the actual project portfolio, it's kicked over from portfolio management into project management. At that point, it becomes an execution phase where you've got a project manager executing it. You'd also have team members who would be adding time and updating um, task information as they progress. 
Um, you'd have report and uh, you'd have enterprise resource management, which would sit underneath this, which would make sure that we're considering a project for inclusion in the portfolio, that we are also looking at the resource impacts and ensuring that the alignment between, you know, we're, we're spending our resources as efficiently as possible. Um, and this can be, again, it doesn't matter what the project is, any type of work management it could be agile, waterfall, continuous build, um, you know, it could be any type of um, integration. So um, that's pretty important, you know, concept. I mean, when, when we're doing these systems, it's, you know, really understanding what the capabilities are of different integrated systems. So if, you, if you're doing like continuous build, um, if you want to use something like Azure DevOps to support that, you know, that would support the, the build and the agile side of it. In terms of resource management and portfolio, that could be project online. Um, so really this whole, you know, system of record is pretty important. And then on the other hand, in terms of the PMO structure, you want to make sure you've got the dashboards and reports that sit on top of the overall ecosystem. So if you're using your licenses properly and the capabilities of the tools properly, you know, you can definitely power an enterprise-wide project management function. Okay, how do we go about doing this? A couple comments here. Um, I like to use agile-based deployments for these. And the reason for that is because um, the ability of organizations to accept change and adopt is 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 limited, right? So there's only so much change they can they can focus on. So it's really good to like think, you know, let's implement one element of the project management solution, and then we can enhance that particular element and also introduce new functionality, literally based on the ability of the organization to adopt, right, and, and, and accept that change. And also, you know, what are the key strategic challenges that the organization has, and let's prioritize things so that we are actually going out and hitting these key projects and key capabilities as much as possible. Um, one of the things about Project Online and Power BI, there's there's definitely a sequence to this um, based on the dependencies. You know, the, the foundation is is basically project management. You need to be able to manage projects. Um, then you go into resource management. Uh, the reason is is because to do resource management, you need projects, right? So you need to have work that's being used by resources. So that's why the resource management is the second side. And then portfolio is required on the end there because. Uh, that would be, you need to have a portfolio of projects and a need to have a portfolio of resources that would be available and considered for portfolio management. So based on dependencies, the sequence is usually project management, resource management, portfolio management. Um, so you think about agile based um, solutions as, as you're considering these type of programs. Okay, let's talk about um, you know, optimization on how we would go about doing this from a licensing perspective. Again, I like to use the, the agile based approaches. Um, first out the scoping exercise, let's do art of the possible capability review, which really, let's see what this tool can do. Let's look at the capabilities around, you know, let's look, let's go back to the license, license chart here and say, okay, what can I do from a project premium perspective? And what are all the capabilities, you know, with this portfolio management function? Let's look at it from a project online professional capability. What are all the capabilities I can do? From a team member, what are the capabilities that we can do? And what the goal here is really to identify, you know, in effect, what this thing can do for you. And then from that, develop a roadmap that goes, um, that can support the implementation of it. In effect, a backlog, right? Like you would do in Sprint, in, in Agile. So, you know, you go from there after a period of scoping, there's a familiarization period. And then you'd go into, you know, this the first phase, which I would call optimization and enhancement, where you would do, you know, process PPM processes, probably focus on project management, you have some training around it, build some reporting. Um, and then, you know, in subsequent sprints, what you would do is have a period, another period of adoption, have a prior um, prior sprint retrospective where you go back and look at the foundation. Where can you add what additional functionality is useful and beneficial at this point? So that would be fixes and updates additional training for the new capabilities and modifications based on of prior functionality and then reporting. And the idea here is that it becomes a journey and it's very much aligned with the governance and strategy um, that, that is also developed around a PPM capability so that, you know, the goal here is for organizational PPM maturity to be built. But I generally find that these types of agile approaches um, versus the traditional waterfalls, it's better to do an agile because it does drive adoption and acceptance by an organization because there's all the governance and strategy and change management that goes with it. Um, so this is definitely the how side of this. Any questions on this from a licensing perspective? Uh, I don't see any questions. Okay. Yeah, so the end, we'll just reach out to Lori Dawkins or myself and we'll, we can share some of this material with you. Let's talk about new project, um, as they're calling it here in Redmond. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, what Microsoft is doing is they are in basically re-architecting the project um, environment, um, starting... You know, it's going to start within actually the first release is going to be home, as they call it, um, starting in December. Um, then there's going to be a roadmap feature, which is going to come out. I think it's in April or May of 2019. Um, and, you know, there's going to be you know, new new capabilities around it. Really, you know, this is a Microsoft slide, um, you know, modern work management ecosystem, you know, built for teamwork is what they're calling it. Um, and they want integration. They want security. And as they call it, unlock creativity. But it's really built for teamwork is the way to describe it in terms of the new tool. In terms of their work management ecosystem, this is what it's going to be. You've got Project Premium, Project Pro. Um, what they're telling us is the license schemas that we've seen, um, Project Pro Premium, Project Professional, Project Essentials, those will remain unchanged. Um, what they're saying, what Microsoft has been telling us is that the new capabilities within project are going to be rolled out over time and aligned with these licenses. So if you've got an existing project professional license, um, you will get the new functionality um, with it. So it's not going to be one of these where you have to su suddenly use a new, new key piece of functionality. It's just going to be available to you. Um, and that's why we get back to the sprint, um, the agile based um, deployment methodologies. Um, the roadmap approach that we just talked about for purposes of um, deploying project online can also be used to introduce um, this new project capability. Um, again, it's just a PPM. It's a project management capability. You're building organizational maturity. Um, so it gives you the opportunity to bring this out as well. Um, other components of the ecosystem, v VSTS, or not, as they call it now, Azure DevOps, um, we integrate with that. Um, Quantum does a lot of that for, so if you're doing Agile, if you're doing um, continuous build within um, Azure DevOps, um, it has Git capabilities, for example. Um, you can use that and integrate that with Project Online and New Project. So you can have capabilities like um, enterprise portfolio management and resource management residing in Project, where the Agile and continuous build capabilities are in um, Azure DevOps. Integration with Dynamics, also um, pretty important, like PSA, for example. They're bringing resource management and project resource management together into one um, solution. Uh, we can integrate with um, AX and also CRM as well. So if you've got, you know, if you want to use it for ERP based capabilities or CRM capabilities, uh, work management, other things with Planner. That's another one that's coming out and Teams. Uh, we've been putting together demos now where, you know, we can show how you're operating, you know, project online through Teams. Um, but the new version of project is going to be integrated with Planner. Uh, we also integrate project online with Planner. But in terms of like work management using Planner, Teams as a as a UI that allows you to access these solutions is coming along, and then SharePoint for document management. So this is what they're going to consider the new work management ecosystem. There we go. Um, in terms of you know the the work management in terms of modern work management ecosystem, you know we talked about the project team level, the collaboration, the infrastructure levels. You know this is the the vision for how this is going to hang together. So you've got you know infrastructure using the cloud, so it's innovation and security, um, collaboration across project teams globally. Again with cloud, you have fewer issues with latency and um, and you can have data that's that's segmented by geography and GDPR compliance. So all this is going to be um, you know, globally integrated. Uh, the other aspect of this is you'll have work management where, you know, projects, teams will be able to work um, using the new project, using Planner. Um, we can also integrate with like Asana or something, but, you know, they're, they're, this is going to have work management features so it'll take advantage of Planner's capability. New project will focus on execution at the PPM level and the portfolio level. So the, what the idea is you want to have the whole integrated stack across Microsoft um, solutions um, as we go. Okay, this is a, a slide that I pulled together from, from re press releases that Microsoft has put out around um, the project service, or they call it the project. Um, these are the main capabilities that are going to be coming out. Home, Roadmap, which is the new, new capability of portfolio, new, new web-based project management experience for accidental project managers, um, and the connectivity between project and the desktop. So if you've got a desktop version of 2016 or 2019, there'll still be connectivity between the desktop version of it. Um, I mean, to think of it this way is it's going to have home, which is going to allow you to bring, um, it's going to have a super view of, of all the different projects you're working on from different sources. Roadmap, which will allow you to look at the entire portfolio from a roadmap perspective. 
um, and we'll and we'll have um, we'll have some slides to talk about what some of those things are. Um, all these capabilities are going to be built on Microsoft's CDS, the Common Data Service. Um, it'll be integrated with O365, and we'll talk about deployment timelines, migration, and architecture coming up next. Here's what home's going to look like. This is a screenshot of um, this was what was shown at the Microsoft Ignite conference a couple weeks ago. Um, in terms of what you can see here, and what the, what does this show you? It has, you know, here here's the um, the dates that we have overall. Um, it allows you to look at um, the different project dependencies, basically the entire portfolio. Um, and then you've got this, this is kind of a planner based view on the left here. We've got asset creation, motivation, behavior, code review, release candidacy. So you have different people assigned to different types of activities. You've got a, essentially like a work based um, view of this. Um, that's going to be, that'll be provided. Um, this is just a screenshot. I mean, I have not seen the actual new version of it, but this is kind of what it's going to look like. This is what they're they're telling us it's going to look like. Um, we're meeting with Microsoft today and tomorrow, so hopefully maybe we'll have some more information to share um, at some point in the future. This is some um, QA information that was provided by Microsoft um, from the Ignite session. Um, and some of the things to think about is... Um, the new capabilities for the new project will be available through existing project online subscriptions. So if you've got an existing enterprise agreement and you've got a project online subscription, you'll get the new project fee services. And the other thing they've been telling us is that, you know, they're going to be in parallel. So you'll still have PWA, you'll still have project online. So you, it gives you that opportunity to migrate things over time. Um, and that's what I was saying with the roadmap based solution where you do a best, a um, art of the possible based uh, analysis, you can actually, you know, have both of these and have used new project for some things and old project for other things, and then transition across over a period of time as you, as you choose to do. Um, project online will, and PWA as they call it, continue to receive performance and security improvements. Um, they're providing full support as they go, um, continue to invest in confidence of Microsoft project, you know, but they're saying that going forward, innovation is going to focus on new projects and project service, um, committed to providing visibility to release roadmap so you can start planning your transition. Um, we'll help you understand the new project service when it supports your business model so you can so you can transition as soon as it makes sense for your business. Um, I understand there's, there's a lot of information missing there. What does the roadmap look like? And um, frankly, it hasn't been released yet. They're, they're actually Microsoft's in the process of developing that. But um, in terms of, you know, the ability to receive performance and security improvements, um, you know, that, that that's important. Um, having both of these available in parallel is pretty important. Um, the fact that you can do a, an agile based approach over a period of time and also the old integration side of it with the rest of the Microsoft stack. Other information from Ignite. Um, what they're suggesting, what they're suggesting now is a side by side transition strategy, no data migration. Um, you, basically, what they're saying is, is, is you, you run them in side by side, start your new projects in, in new project, continue to complete the projects that are in flight with Project Online, and kind of transition um, running them in parallel. Um, obviously, the cloud-based solution this is an advantage because if it's not like you're if you were doing on-prem, you'd have to worry about you know where do I put these multiple versions. But if it's on if it's cloud-based, you don't have to worry about that as well. Um, but there are going to be um, other options available if this is not feasible. Uh, Microsoft is going to be working on some migration tools when they're available. Um, I don't know what that is, but this is what they're telling us. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll you know, help you val validate the feasibility benefits of native migration tools. Um, that's a, one thing that Quantum does a really great job of is in terms of migrating um, from, from different versions of the tool. I'm sure we'll be doing that as well with um, new project when it comes along. Um, and we're going to work with uh, my MCS, Microsoft Consulting, and, and, Pro and Quantum PM the best strategy to move um, your project online custom apps and code to the new project services. So if you've got add-ins, um, if you've got application, you know, add-ons that you've developed for your um, desktop version, all that would have to be moved to this, you know, integrate with the new service. And here's what the architecture is going to look like, um, which is a little bit different. So um, if you think about it, this is, it's all going to be on the common data service for applications. It's all going to be an Azure based. Um, you'll have roadmap, sales, project management side of it, field service, customer service, time and expense, um, and then you've got the resource manager. This is all the, um, what you would call, this is um, dynamics over here. For project, you'll have roadmap, home, project management, client, project, and then you'll have the project web, access, web, web apps, um, which will be the web-based focus of it. Um, in terms of like um, ability to integrate with like flow, 
um, roaming and, and, and uh, PCS, that's all going to be supported um, as an integration hub. So we'll be using Flow as a mechanism for integrating with other applications. Um, you'll have Azure DevOps providing Azure boards. So if you want to create work items within Azure DevOps, that'll be an ability to integrate here. Um, you'll have Power Apps and Power BI to support analytics and reporting as it progresses. So this is going to be a pretty comprehensive um, you know, solution that, that that's going to be rolled out over time. I mean, typically when Microsoft releases something like this, it takes about three years or so. Um, so eventually they're going to say, well, Project Online is going to be um, you know, decommissioned, but that's going to take three or four years for that to happen. Um, so the ability to plan and, and plan these migrations is, is a pretty um, – pretty significant um, you know, opportunity for organizations. And if you develop a transition roadmap, you know, this art of the possible approach that can allow you to um, plan and adopt um, for addressing those particular types of challenges. Okay. And in terms of new deployment to project, I mean, again, this is the same kind of thing. Proof of concept, you know, let's do the, um, let's do the POC, let's do the initials, and then we go refine and enhance. All right. Any questions on that, Lori? Are we are we good? I think we're good. Okay. So for demo today, what we're going to look at is just some, you know, some of the capabilities within existing Project Online, how those align with different license schemas um, that we have. Um, so, for example, if you've got a, um, if you want to think about it, the, the Project Premium licenses, which is the portfolio management. Um, the view that I'm showing you right here, this is I've got the premium license myself. So if you're a, a project, a portfolio manager, <clears throat> all the capabilities around um, portfolio analysis, the driver library, driver prioritization, um, and also the full enterprise resource management, that would all be um, the premium side of it. So if I go, for example, if I want to look at driver library, you know these are the individual drivers for portfolio management. You know what are the start end dates? Uh, the ability to configure and establish all these, these are all associated with a premium license. Um, driver prioritization, you know, the ability to develop schemas that represent um, different views of how projects should be prioritized. Um, this is all part of the premium license um, package. So, you know, CIO prioritization, if we want to look in that particular piece, you know, this allows us to select the drivers and weight them. So, you know, some of these can be more important than others. Um, we've got a situation with the um, portfolio analysis capability. So the ability to develop models, um, you know, that are repeatable, um, it can be supported um, using the premium license. So, for example, if I go into portfolio analysis and I'm running this model that I've constructed here. If I were to look at the um, prioritized projects. Gives me a heat map. If I want to look at the analyzed cost side of it, where there's the two towers here, we've got the cost side and you've got the um, resource side. So I have the option of looking at the overall um, portfolio management. So I can say, okay, let's look at the which projects should I select. You know, in this case, these are the strategic um, cost. These are the priorities for the projects that are being considered based on the scoring of the projects and also um, the, the weighting and the schema that was selected before. So if we have a uh, CIO prioritization and there's a different scoring for different projects, that's where these numbers come up with. Um, in terms of the analyzed resources, this is also part of the premium license schema. So if you go in here, and what, what this can do is it allows you to look at different um, different um, groups. Again, it allows you to, to figure out what projects can be supported with the resource pool you've got. Um, there's really two variables here. You can either hire resources or you can change the start dates for the projects. And then you can commit those dates to the projects, which means you update the start dates in the project portfolio, in the project thing. So if I want to see instead of hiring four, let's hire zero, recalculate. moved a different bunch of different projects out but if I want to start some of these later so for example if I want to move this one to December and this one to January oh, now it brought it in no I guess it didn't so but I mean what you can do is you can change the, the start dates and you can also change the resources for portfolio so that's the big benefit of the premium license um, 
in terms of the professional license, um, this is a couple things you want to look at for pro for the professional. That's basically everything a project manager would do um, from a project management perspective. So um, the ability to, to work with workflows, the ability to um, score projects, do all the project management piece of this. So I, I, this is the project center view within project online, the highest level view. Um, I'm looking at it by project by project type, um, which can be segmented and, and you can change different views. You can only look at a subset of these, but I'm going to look at the, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a view, change it to a different uh, segment of these. So now I'm looking at um, a small subset of all the of all the project types based on a on a constrained view. Um, I created one for, called Art of the Possible Webinar for Demo, which is today what we're doing here. So you click on that, it brings you out to uh, what the project in this case you know this is part of what the project manager has that's available um, you've got the schedule that's predefined which you've got on the, let's go on the top here on the left here you've got the project detail pages that are associated with the project um, so you've got project information project details get scheduling which is the predefined template that's associated with a particular project type um, and it can also have generic resources that are assigned with it um, so that if you've got like a category of or types of people that can be assigned with a particular task that can all be assigned in the template then you have the strategic impact so this is the ability to score projects based upon um, the value and alignment with the value of the with the strategic portfolio so if an organization figures out how it measures value uh, these can be used to to score a candidate project. So and this would be a major input into the portfolio analysis function. So the project manager can score it, but the portfolio manager would be the one who would decide what's in the portfolio and what's not in the portfolio. Um, so uh, when I figure out what the drivers are, what the scoring is, uh, that would be something the project manager can do. Um, a lot of times what can happen is this will flow from a business case at the beginning as well um, for inclusion into the overall project portfolio. And then the um, so those are the main the main activities that can happen from a project manager um, perspective. The other thing to think of is when you're using a project professional license here. Let me close this up. I have the oops, oops hold on here. I can do this click to run. Um, we talked about earlier the the difference between pro, um, project web access and also um, the desktop version of the of the tool. They click on this, this is click to run. So what this will do is it'll take me from project PWA, which is project web access, take me to my desktop. So at this point, I can do all kinds of more advanced type resource management. So for example, if I want to look at the, um, let's go to resources here. So, I mean, for example, if I want to make a resource assignment, I'm in the wrong spot here. What am I, my, not my desktop here. So I have the option here. If I could do like, for example, show resource availability. So I can click on that and apply a filter to it. So they'll give me a list of who these resources are and who's available and who's not available. So there's a lot of capabilities here that can come with PWA that comes with the Project Pro desktop version that you don't have, um, that you wouldn't have with the desktop piece, that you, that you wouldn't have on the cloud version of this. Um, so, I mean, so this is a, you know, this is pretty much, um, you know, what we can do with a um, project professional uh, piece of this. So all the project management capabilities, um, workflow functionalities, um, we talked about, for example, here, you know, I set up this one, Art of the Possible Webinar for Demo. Um, if you go to the main section here, we've, we've got a workflow 
that's associated with the um, life cycle associated with this particular project type. So we've got different phases, and we've got these are the stages within the phase. Um, so this is all something that can be configured. So if I want to go ahead and push something into a different phase in the workflow, I can submit the workflow. That allows it in progress. So I mean, you can actually move things along from a work from a from a workflow perspective. So this is all part of your um, project professional um, license. So the whole click to run piece of this, the whole ability to drive workflow, the ability to do resource management, assign resources, set strategic impacts. Um, those are all you know pretty important capabilities that the system has. Um, the other one for Project Pro is that it gives you the if you go to Power BI. Um, which is a really great prom reporting tool that's associated with this. Um, Microsoft has a series of services that are available um, based upon that are basically standard content packs that are available to anybody. So if you want to use Microsoft Project Online, there's one already provided by Microsoft. Um, so if you want to have a report that represents Microsoft's thinking on it, I can go here. Oops, where is it here? So in Power BI, you've got the, um, you know, this is the view of the of the data that's out there. Um, we've got a portfolio dashboard. This is a, a free report, free content pack that comes with a project professional um, license. So you can see, you know, here's the portfolio dashboard, portfolio view, portfolio timeline that comes with it. Um, portfolio cost. You know, and then some of the other ones you can do is like you can do risks and issues, but the big one is like resource availability. Uh, if we want to look at resource management to perform resource management capabilities over time, um, you can use Power BI to support those things. And those are all coming with, um, you know, the content pack, the availability of the content pack is something that comes with your license for um, professional and premium. Um, you do need a Power BI license, though. <laughs> so that's a different, um, it can come with a Office 365 E5 subscription, or you can buy them separately. Okay, and then finally, last thing I want to talk about today was we talked about Power BI. Um, for the for the essentials license, <clears throat> what that basically does is what a team member does. So if I want to go, if I'm a team member, um, I'm not going to have all this information on my screen. It'll be very much narrowed down to the projects that I am working on, so I will be able to do my timesheets. So for example, this is my timesheet. Um, we've got the you know, these are the projects that I'm assigned to currently. Here's the dime, and here's the actual and the planned. Um, so I'll be able to just say, okay, here's my my actual time, here's my planned time, which the project manager will set. So I can actually enter my time as as they progress that. So that's something that comes with the essentials license. It's very much focused on, you know, understanding what task the person's assigned to, how much time they have associated with it, and the ability to enter individual times um, that comes with it. Okay. That's all I had for today. Does anybody have any questions, or, or are, we all, are we all set, Lori? We have any questions? Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in. Yeah. And please reach out for some of this information on the licensing stuff, because I mean, a lot of it is, you know, really, you need to look at the overall schema for your license and figure out, you know, are we using all the capabilities that are available? Um, and there could be things that are just sitting there that you haven't taken advantage of that you're paying for. Um, so. You know, see what you can take advantage of this as much as possible. Um, I don't see any questions, John, so I think we're probably good. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, please reach out again, Lori Dawkins or myself, if you have any questions or, or want this material. Um, we could definitely talk to you about licenses. Um, you know, one of these Art of the Possible demos where we just walk through you know, what is, how do we do portfolio management? How do we do resource management? How do we do work management? You know, we love to do those and we definitely love to, to talk to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.